I'm so excited to film this video because I love when a movie surprises the heck out of me and I know it's going to be a really positive review. Today we're obviously talking about The First Omen, which is a prequel to the 1976 movie The Omen. And this is set in 1971 when a young American woman is sent to Rome to begin a life of service to the church. She encounters a darkness that causes her to question her own faith and uncovers a terrifying conspiracy that hopes to bring about the birth of evil incarnate. Given how much I rant all the time about remakes, reboots, and sequels, I was not excited for this movie at all. I honestly, I hate to say it wasn't necessary because I think there's a place for every horror movie in the genre, even the bad ones, even movies like Imaginary, you know, there's an audience for it. But I am obviously a little bit tired of the remakes, reboots, and sequel era that we're in. Like literally every franchise I think is getting a new installment. Like every, almost every single one has been announced. Something new every day is announced um, that is a remake, reboot, or sequel, and I'm exhausted by that, obviously. You know that already. So I went into this with really no expect- well, that's a lie. I went in with some expectations, but initially I was not excited when I heard about this movie. I was like, I'll go- I'll watch it and I'll review it, I guess. I almost wrote it off and I wasn't gonna watch it in theaters. I thought I would just wait until it comes out on streaming or something. Glad I did not do that because this movie, The First Omen, has now taken first place of the best horror movie that I've seen this year so far. Granted, the competition that it had, um, that it was up against, wasn't very good to begin with, so I doubt it's going to stay in first place throughout the whole remaining of the year. But oh my god, was this movie really, really good. Now, I have never seen the original Omen. I know, I probably should have done my homework and due diligence before doing this video and watched the 1976 movie. Um, however, I did not do that. <laughs> so I've kind of watched this from a reference of like it's its own movie, like standalone movie. Also, it helps that it's a prequel, so it's not following anything really in the original. I'm sure there are a lot of hom homages, homages? Oh my god, what is that word? <laughs> homages. Can I speak today? <laughs> My brain is absolutely everywhere. It's so, I'm so distracted on a daily basis. This month has been terrible, so I apologize. That's why this video is so late. Anyway, I am a little bit familiar with the story of The Omen. I've seen the remake. When did the remake come out? It's early 2000s, whatever. I've seen the remake with Julia Stiles, and I liked it. I know, I think that's controversial. I said I liked it once, and someone was like, girl. Let me know if you like the the remake as well, even though, you know, I just went on a rant about remakes. But anyway, that's the only one that I've seen, so that's the only reference point I have for any Omen movie. So I knew the general storyline, and I knew what would actually transpire in the end. I'm not gonna say it yet, because I'll wait till spoilers and whatnot, but I knew kind of what was going to happen in the end. But I still don't think it took away at all from the experience of this movie because I was just like waiting to see how it would get there. And honestly, the way it gets there is so unique and definitely not what I really anticipated. It was, I really, really liked how they did it. And I think it's because the audience is meant to know. I think this is made for audiences who have seen The Omen, the original Omen. So I think it's not a secret. It's not like they're holding back this big reveal, even though it does kind of feel like that, I think it is for fans of the original Omen. I almost wish this was not a prequel to the Omen because I'm worried people, there are other people like me who will write this movie off as just another, you know, prequel in a franchise of, you know, a couple movies that we've already seen. It's the same formula, the same characters, you know, and I'm worried people are going to write it off because of that, like I almost did. So I'm here to preach from the, scream it from the rooftops that if you trust my opinion and you are also like me who are tired of franchise stuff, go see this movie. If it is it still in theaters, I think it is. <laughs> Cinematically, I am absolutely obsessed with the vibe of this movie. Everything about the filmography, film, cinematography, um, I loved. It was stunning. The Some of the scenes literally made me like gasp. They were so 
beautiful and beautifully shot for no reason. Like there was no reason her lying in a bed after a party with her hair out like that should be so beautiful, but it was. It was just such a stunning shot to me. There's a specific aerial shot that is the, the camera's like whipping around over these buildings, over the city. And it's just like this loud music and it just feels very era appropriate for the 70s and 80s even of that kind of filmmaking. It just, I could tell that there was a lot of love and passion, not only for the original Omen probably, but also just the decade that this takes place in for filmmaking and horror in general. Speaking of which, there is a scene that is so enthralling and so enticing. You cannot look away. Now it's because of Nell Tiger Free's performance in this particular scene. And it is an homage to the movie Possession from 1981. I have not seen that because I'm a little bit scared of it to be honest, <laughs> because I know the famous tunnel scene, right? And this scene is an homage to that. So if you like the Possession and you appreciate that performance, I've seen that tunnel scene, which is why I get the reference. And I knew immediately what they were going for when I saw this, even though I've never seen Possession, I knew exactly the vibe that they were going for and what inspired that shot. But that scene was so good. Oh my God, like her performance in this, it's a long take and it's just so emotional and uncomfortable at the same time. It was just so well done. It feels like the writers and the director of this movie knew that they were going into the process of making something that had been done before. Like they knew uh, the cliches, but they decided to run with it and reinvent them and reimagine them in a really unique way where this feels really original, despite it being almost exactly like the movie Immaculate that just came out. It felt smart and refreshing for the genre, despite it being like kind of a cliche concept, it didn't feel overplayed. It was something about the way this was filmed and the homages to old horror movies that you could just tell the love that went into this movie. Now, I hate to compare Immaculate with the first omen, but I know the comments are going to be all over that anyway, so I have to talk about it and the similarities between them because they are like the same exact plot. I really loved Immaculate. I think it was really strong sans jump scares. The jump scares in Immaculate were horrendous and also some of the cliches. I feel like that one did kind of reinvent the wheel a little bit, um, but not in as a creative way as the first omen did, so it kind of made me like Immaculate less. Like I said, I know it's really unfair to do that. I know it's unfair to compare the two, but it did make me appreciate the first omen more for the creativity and just the cinematography and score and everything they chose for that movie compared to Immaculate. Uh, it just wasn't as strong. If you take the end of Immaculate, which is by far the best part of the movie, it's the most shocking and disturbing. If you take that feeling and put it throughout the entirety of the first omen, that's what it feels like, is that they took that sensation of discomfort and put it and make it the first omen. Like it's just that throughout the entire movie. There are so many scenes that just carry that same weight and are just as disturbing. <laughs> and I'm really shocked to say that I preferred the first Omen to Immaculate, given Immaculate is an original horror movie and I usually gravitate towards that versus something within a franchise. So I'm surprised that I like a prequel more than an original horror, but it just is what it is. It's it's better, what can I say? <laughs> there were a few jump scares in The First Omen, but I actually enjoyed them. There was like two or three that I thought were really good and well done because there was some follow through and they were expected, yes, because I feel like jump scares, you can always tell when they're about to do a jump scare, but I feel like in The First Omen, they were done really, really well. Like this is kind of how you do a jump scare in order to scare the audience for what you're about to see from the jump scare. I think that's important versus a bird smashing into a window for no reason. Middle of the day, there's no horror happening in the scene. I don't love that kind. If there's horror, it's a horrific scene and then there's a jump scare involved. I feel like that's okay. The body horror, it's some of my favorite, I think. Maybe out of the last like couple years because it was so good and shocking and exactly what I was in the mood for. It's like exactly what I wanted from this movie. And I think people will be surprised that I like this movie so much given 
the the triggers, which I'll talk about later. And I'll give specifics in spoilers if you are curious and you just want to skip out on the movie and want to know what happens. I'll describe it to you. But anyway, the gore in this was just so satisfying. It was so good. They didn't hold back at all. And they are obviously out to shock you, but in a really great way. I was warned multiple times about this movie and the content within it because you all know my triggers by now and what I will and won't watch. And this, I think, had it been a year ago or even when I was pregnant, I probably would not have watched this yet. I would have waited until I felt more comfortable. I was bracing myself to be really overwhelmed within this movie while I was watching it. I watched it by myself as well, so I was a little bit nervous for how I would react to it. But genuinely, it didn't really bother me that much. Even the scene, the scene that almost made it not get an R rating, the shocking scene, it didn't bother me that much. So let me talk a little bit about some of the content in this without giving any spoilers first. And this is com coming from someone who's very sensitive to these things, so keep that in mind. But also everyone is different, so just because it didn't affect me that much doesn't mean it won't affect you, depending on your experiences and your boundaries. So there are two scenes of SA in this movie. However, I didn't find them to be very graphic. They do show leading up to the moment, and it's more conceptual. It is obviously heavily implied what is happening. I didn't find it to cross my boundaries at all. I found it to be tasteful in the way that they did it. Um, still shocking, yes, but it's conceptual. So obviously that is still going to bother some people, but for me, I was okay. Now, pregnancy and birth. Huge theme within this and Immaculate, of course. There are three scenes in total in the first omen that I think could be a lot for some people. The first in the movie is actually considered the most graphic within the movie and is the scene that the MPA rating people uh, did not want to give this an R rating. They wanted to rate it NC-17 because of this scene in particular. And they resubmitted this movie four times until it finally got an R-rated movie, movie, <laughs> an R rating. They just shortened the scene. So it's still shocking, but it's not as long, I think, as it originally was, which I guess is good. To me, that scene, it didn't really, it didn't really get to me. It's a, it's a, it's a birthing scene. Now this scene in particular is probably going to be the most talked about as far as why this movie is so shocking. However, I found the last scene, birthing kind of scene in this movie to be the most uncomfortable to watch for me personally. And I'll go into specifics why in spoilers. I think when it, I think what it is with my boundaries with pregnancy and horror and birth and traumatic birth and things in horror movies, when it comes to, when it's demonic, when it's something demonic and it's not like a happy pregnancy, <laughs> that doesn't bother me as much because I know it's not real. It's like a demon, you know? Whereas the movie Inside, the French movie, I could never watch that again because it is literally about a woman trying to steal a baby from a pregnant woman's belly. That to me feels realistic and like is a fear, right? Of it just being taken away from you like that. That's her horrifying. Uh, don't even wanna think about it. So that bothers me. But demonic pregnancy and like, that kind of thing, it doesn't really get to me. <laughs> now I think I'm more bothered by babies and children in horror movies uh, not surviving. I think that, or like neglected or something, I think that is more, you know, terrifying to me than pregnancy, birth, things like that. So now I'm gonna get into spoilers and I just kind of want to break down those scenes a little bit more. If, if you are interested or you don't want to watch this movie and you want to know what happens, I'll explain it to you. Um, but yeah, also just my thoughts on the ending and everything and how it connects back to the omen. So talk about spoilers now, but go watch it. It's so, so good. I gave it four out of five stars. I would absolutely rewatch it. I think it's such a solid horror movie. So the first scene in question that I describe is the most graphic within the movie. Like I said, it's full on. You get a full shot, right? You know what I'm talking about? I also have to stay monetized here, people. She's not birthing a baby. I mean, she is in reality, but our protagonist sees things. She hallucinates. And so with that, um, she's seeing a demonic hand actually coming out towards you, the camera, the audience. That's what you see coming out. And so, yes, it's graphic, it's horrifying, but to me, something about it being a vision, a hallucination, 
didn't make it that disturbing to me. The next scene is the scene I was talking about where it's inspired by possession and the performance is just, you, you cannot take your eyes off of the screen when it's happening and it's just enduring and it's long. It's uncomfortable to watch. She's basically having a accelerated pregnancy. So you see her belly start to swell and it's growing rapidly. So our protagonist, of course, is the one who eventually carries Damien from The Omen. I knew that was happening because she had a lot of similarities with Carlita, who is another girl in the convent that they say is the, the spawn of Satan, right? And this disturbing nature of this comes from the concepts. I think the concepts are more disturbing than the actual visuals on screen. So we know that Satan himself has to impregnate his own daughter to bear a son. And that is gross, obviously. So there's themes of incest in this as well, which is more disturbing than I think anything else in the movie. But you don't really see the the act happening. You see the women being bound. They have like a, a mesh the scarf put over their head with the rope, like a noose tied around their neck, and then you know what's about to happen. The first scene in the movie is consensual. <laughs> she like gave herself to Satan. Um, then the following is not. So it's there, there's SA in it, but you don't actually see Satan or the demon up until the very, very end. And then you see he's like a demonic dog looking thing, which I wasn't really excited about. I didn't really love how he looked. <laughs> anyway, so there were a lot of signs within our protagonist that showed that she was going to also be a daughter of Satan. And um, I knew when the club scene happened, when her and her friend go clubbing and she ends up hooking up with a guy, again, nothing on screen. That's, you, you catch up with it later. Um, but you realize that she was impregnated at that time. So I knew she was pregnant from that scene. I was like, there, something happened there. She got really drunk and something took place. So to me, the story was kind of obvious of what was happening. Um, I didn't think they were gonna impregnate the 14 year old girl, you know, where she would be the one to carry Damien. I knew it was going to be our lead actor, right? So I wasn't really surprised when that was revealed. I don't even think that was meant to be a surprise, maybe. I don't think it was supposed to be like a big twist um, because there were a lot of signs leading up to that, her hallucinating just like Carlita does, all that kind of stuff. So the final scene is what really bothered me personally because of the babies. <laughs> the babies I just like really wanted to hold and I was so scared they were gonna kill the baby. So in the end, it turns out that she's having twins, a boy and a girl, so it's revealed first baby out is a girl and the second is a boy and then they celebrate because they finally got their boy which ends up being Damien in the future movie but they tell them to leave her and the little baby girl to die they just tell tell them to leave her to die and I was like can someone please take that baby like just the baby sitting there crying like around the, the placenta is still around her and I was just like this baby girl I, that bothers me more than the birthing process you know now the last scene is a c-section type situation so that obviously can be traumatic in this setting so we have both kinds of birth uh, portrayed in this movie so you're no one's safe from you know whatever experience you may have had <laughs> with your baby so there is some visual of him like digging around in her belly to get the babies out um you know c-section and she's really out of it and it, that's disturbing that whole scene is disturbing it shows a lot this movie isn't scared to show a lot of body horror. I think this movie is as close to an NC-17 rating as you can get while still maintaining an R rating because it shows a lot. But that's why the final scene bothered me more than the other scenes of like the rapid pregnancy or, you know, she was also leaking fluid in that scene as well. And then the first scene being the birthing the hand, the demonic hand. Um, I, those weren't as bad or the c-section i was squirming i really wanted to look away but honestly the other body horror scenes were more disturbing and made me want to look away more than the birthing parts i just i couldn't stand the little crying baby and like the little the little thing um which ends up being a happy ending right so she ends up escaping grabs the little girl and carlita and they go and live in the woods 
and that's that's kind of the end of the movie <laughs> now the very very ending um the father returns to like show her who is going to be adopting damien and it's a very wealthy family and that ends up being the characters in the omen movie so that's kind of how it connects back to the omen i am really interested in watching the original now having seen the prequel i think it was good that i watched it in that order i probably would have appreciated some of the homages more had i seen the original first but i'm not mad at this order that i'm watching it in you know i'm not I'm not mad that I didn't see it first. This movie was just near perfect to me. Like it was so good in so many ways. I don't even know why I'm rating it four instead of five. Like it probably deserves a five, to be honest. The only thing is that it's not an original kind of idea that this story has been done before quite literally, but also it's like in a franchise, which isn't my favorite. So maybe that's why it's like not screaming a five star to me, but it's near perfect. Like I cannot wait to own this movie and rewatch it because it is just stunning. Some of the shots are just so visually beautiful. If you've seen The First Omen, please tell me your thoughts down below if you liked it. Um, and I hate to ask this, but I, I know it's gonna happen anyway. Did you like Immaculate or The First Omen more? I'm sorry to do that, to compare them, but that's what people are talking about because they're very similar in plot. Anyway, leave a comment down below. Tell me your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed and I will talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>